so hot in here right now. I get, I get it. I get why people. I get why. I, mean, I feel like Jawbreed does these videos on people that I've just never heard of before. Like, I, 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 get it. Going. I had taken a break in a very, very long time. It just felt almost like everyone that I had tried to help build and reach out to just turned on me. I think just because. Because it did get clicks, you need like it gets clicked, and it's so insane. Yeah, like I, it, it got to the point where I, I didn't leave my house ever. Wait, that looks like fucking uh, Bo Burnham. I think the it became trendy to hate me. I think. Let's talk about the guy we all love to hate. Shane Dawson is one of YouTube's earliest pioneers and still remains one of the most talked about creators to this day. Shane Dawson is proof that like, you can't always fix shit up when you got money, okay? I'm sorry if that comes across as insensitive, but like virtually every other person that made as much money as Shane Dawson really fix this shit up okay i know he's got a big fandom and people are probably gonna get mad at me and stuff but like like how are you just he just looked worse over time the more money he made the worse he looked and that makes no sense to me Connor's trying to get a little weirded about everyone's radio sounds on the whole virgil text situation i don't know if you covered it but if we're on the subject i thought i would bring him up what what Virgil Texas situation? He always had body image issues and his depression made it worse. Stop taking care of himself. Shane looked like that to appear relatable? I doubt it, dude. No one fucking does that to themselves to look uh, relatable. Poor and gross is aesthetic. He's trying to be relatable by saying he's poor every five seconds. How? Everybody knows how much money he fucking had. Hey, with his contentious- He's a major groomer? What? Okay, I'll look into it later has coming under massive scrutiny seemingly every other month now, it's hard to deny that Shane's contributions to the platform have not been met without criticism. And for, for good reason. Come on, man, what is this? Good job, Lucy! But next time, shake your titties more. And you, take off the jacket and show more. Good job over there. Hey, what's up, you guys? But as his reputation continues to crumble in front of our very eyes, it's important to remember how Shane Dawson- How did you avoid that for so long? Avoid what? That clip of Shane calling himself poor wrapped in a Hermes blanket? Show me that, please. Virgil had one anonymous allegation on a burner Twitter account, and the left is so fucking stupid they believe it. Okay, now I'm confused. Are we talking about Shane Dawson or Virgil Texas? Because you're talking about he grew... Like, the cat thing is, is fucking Shane Dawson, right? Like, he talked about fucking his cat. I remember that. You should stop reading stuff out loud about Virgil. Self-report, that's a BJG fan. Okay, we're just watching this, okay? I don't know what the fuck the other thing is. You avoid everything. Keep it up. I do, night. but you know what you can't avoid? The top of the hour ad break 20 minutes early. Guess what, motherfucker? Because that's a gooder, that's a gooder, that's a better transition away from whatever the fuck you guys are uh, yelling about and back into the fucking Shane Dawson video. Now, if you no longer want to see the ads, if you want to add free broadcasting experience, all you need to, shut up, I said gooder. I said fucking gooder. Okay?
I already I have the daily dot article uh clicked into over here, okay? <laughs> Tons of bitches. That break is here. You can avoid it by subscribing with a Twitch Prime for free or with a five dollar subscription. Here's the app right now. Okay. <clears throat> was once commonly affiliated with the I should watch a different streamer I really should <laughs> rehabilitation best, of broken individuals in recent history he's actually worked to reconstruct the shattered careers of some of YouTube's greatest villains turning an otherwise negative situation on its head and satisfying every party by offering a new perspective into the lives of select online personalities but at what point can a person's generosity go too far in Bro, that's actually brilliant. Now that I think about it, that's actually fucking brilliant. Like, you literally tap into the fan bases My of happy, some of the largest fucking content creators. No, I called out a, a chatter for baiting me at, uh... Ha uh ha. -huh. You said Gouda. Did I? I think it was like... Yeah, it was. It was. I literally... I think I literally ran the fucking ad at the same exact time that I... Called out a chatter on... Oh my god, that's so bad. I'm sorry, chatter. When does a seemingly simple It was literally the exact same time, dude. The exact same fucking time. Oh my god, I'm so... I'm a bad person. Compassion inadvertently lead to a cautionary tale of what it means to kill someone with kindness. If you ask me, the perfect example um, of this yeah. may lie within Bobby Burns. Um, Bobby, are you, are you going to clap the chain or anyone to make him? Yes. But first, I want to thank our sponsor, Storyfire. If you've been watching YouTube for as long as I have, you probably... Professional YouTuber. Professional YouTuber. But before anything else, let's figure out how Bobby got started. Hey guys, so about two weeks ago I told you I was going to tell you the story about how I moved from Nashville, Tennessee to Los Angeles into this house to become a professional YouTuber. And guess what? It's now time for that story. Bobby Burns is a 23-year-old vlogger slash commentator slash musician with well over 600,000 subscribers on his main channel. Because his content doesn't exactly fit into one distinct mold, it's fair to say he's undergone a series of titles over the course of his time on the platform. First breaking into the YouTube scene an entire decade ago with the debut of his first channel, Chicken Feet Films, where you could find anything from Nerf battles to Lego stop-motion animations. In in fact, these videos served as my first introduction to Bobby Burns probably five or six years ago. It's safe to say he's been a prevalent creator for quite a long time. Damn. How the fuck did you do this? Though it wasn't until April of 2014 that Bobby announced the launch of an entirely new channel with the aim of producing movie reviews. This is when Bobby officially shifted over to the channel we know today, where he began creating exactly what he set out to do. For a couple years, Bobby continued to review films, react to trailers, and even upload some of his own original short films and sketches. He even announced his own feature-length film he was working on with his friends at one point. I mean, it was clear from the start that Bobby had a love for movies and dedicated himself to entertaining his viewers no matter the cost. Naturally, this drive led his channel through a myriad of evolutions, with Bobby categorizing each new wave of content with a different number. For example, Bobby 1.0 had to do with pretty innocuous album and movie reviews, while Bobby 2.0 took a more serious look at films and collaborated with the likes of larger movie channels like CinemaSins. Overall, it wasn't a bad way 
of categorizing his seemingly lucid flow of content, but as time went on and his style naturally changed and morphed along the way, he adopted a rougher, more aggressive tone. One that seemed to fit perfectly in line with Bobby 4.0, which involved Bobby taking a closer look at YouTubers themselves through a more analytical lens. This is when Bobby first started getting some real recognition. We now return you to regular programming. Today, we're going to be talking about his main thing he does on YouTube is he reviews food and drinks. Everything that Anthony says in this video is so intentional. On June 26, 2017, Bobby Burns uploaded a scathing critique of YouTuber apologies, using Anthony from Smosh as a catalyst to delve- Wait, what did he apologize for? Don't prepare on me. Yeah. That's my himbo, dude. That's himbo solidarity. Oh, it's just for leaving Smosh? Hey, buddy, you really missed a lot of internet while you were at TYT, I think? Yeah, because I was fucking literally nonstop politicking deeper into the disingenuous emotions frequently displayed by online personalities. Well, this video ended up taking off and garnered well over a million views in a pretty short amount of time. One of the first real glimpses of online notoriety Bobby had ever received at that level. So naturally, he began to make more and more until his uploads were mostly commentary having to do with the lives and careers of other YouTubers. Not too dissimilar from what you may get from the right opinion or prim today. Ultimately, his career was being set up for long-term success, so long as he continued delivering the content his new subscribers were tuning in for. There's a list of things that I've come up with to look out for when watching a YouTube video. That was a lie. I just realized. I didn't know any about this, anything about this YouTube shit because I was too busy getting laid, dude video from a YouTuber you really enjoy when they're talking about something that seems very emotional or hard for them to deal with. The videos were complete with creative in your skits and nuanced perspectives. Go ahead. Bobby was finally making a name Osmod for himself me. It only makes as well me as paving the way for more channels like his in the meantime. He was doing really well. That is until a very peculiar upload. So you might be saying, oh, do you have a problem with that, Bobby? So another YouTuber making money off something that someone else enjoys? Not necessarily. I have a problem with people m manipulating people. Ultimately, I would argue Bobby would be in a much better- Bro, that's such a whack- Dude. That is the- Oh my god, you guys are still Haas modding. Oh my god. Okay, chat, fucking calm down. Oh no, you're still Haas modding. Okay, stop. Stop! Okay. The point I was going to make is like what this dude is doing, like talking as about how other lost. YouTubers are manipulating their audiences. Like, oh, I just want to expose the fakes. Like, no, you are trying to make yourself appear more authentic. When in fact, the only reason why you're doing this is because you want to fucking take a piece of their clout oh, and make your own brand and your own brand is shitting on them. I don't know why people aren't more honest about it. Especially when like the ultimate goal that you have is is so basic oh i just don't like fakes all right dude uh yeah cool like at least i have like a consistent ideological position a, a world that i want to fucking live in but yeah it doesn't hurt that you know reacting to youtube videos uh, brings a larger audience into this fucking community who then will learn more about politics from someone like myself but i'm not gonna sit here and act like oh yeah dude, yeah i totally like you know, I, I just, um, I, uh, I do this because, you know, not because, like, it, uh, it reaches a larger audience. Thank you, mods. Fizz with a tactical 30-second nuke, dude. Get fucked, boss modders. I'm better so place hot. Hold today on, had he never gotta, made this video. In November of 2017, Bobby set his crosshairs on Shane Dawson. And he didn't exactly hold back either. Making terrible, 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 terrible content. He used blackface. Like a lot. I don't think you guys are getting this enough. Blackface. 
blackface. This person, blackface. Now, although looking back, I think a lot of the criticism here was actually pretty valid. Not everyone felt the same way at the time, and it became one of Bobby's most contentious videos to date. The like to dislike ratio is one of the worst I'd ever seen from Bobby at the time. And this show Shane does is a conspiracy theory show where he sits down and he goes through all these different popular conspiracy theories about things. Wait, so YouTubers, YouTube stands were like, we don't give a fuck that our content creator did blackface, like, fuck yourself? I mean, he was right. That's crazy. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Little babies on YouTube is fucking nuts. things that are going on in the world today in 2017. The only problem with this is that almost none of them are fucking conspiracy theories. I have so much I want to say about this 17 minute video. Let's get started. But it's also not really a bad thing to generate a reaction so polarizing. Just means a lot of people had some strong opinions on what he had to say. One of those people being our favorite cat boy himself. Trying something a little bit different, um, something I've been a little nervous to do, but I feel like it could turn out to be actually really my opinion. See, Shane decided he was going to try something new, filming his reaction to a hate video. Evidently, the video he finally landed on just happened to be that of Bobby Burns. Now, usually you would think Shane would just respond to some of Bobby's criticisms, offer his own rebuttal maybe, and move on with his day, right? Well, that's not really what happened. I like this. I like this. Ooh, I like the background. I like the camera. He looks like he showered can't relate. And instead of just like sending him an email or tweeting him, I think what I want to do is fly him out here, bring him to my house and confront him in person. And maybe, just maybe, I can turn a hater into a lover. Or maybe it'll end really, really badly. We'll get to a huge fight and he'll kill me. As his conspiracy videos were growing trite and rep- So is Shane Dawson like canceled or what? What's the deal? He's such a content demon, dude. What's the last thing that got him canceled? Like the, there was like a cat thing, right? And then there was like little, little girls and stuff like that. He has not made a video in one yule. One yule? Jaden Smith, blackface, grooming, pedophilic behavior, the cat thing. Pedo comments on Will Smith's daughter. Wait, what did he say? Did you guys know that Willow Smith was a Young Turks fan and apparently... Like, we made her cry. Will Smith talked about it in an interview. When we were making fun of, like, uh, uh, Willow Smith and, and Jaden. Yeah. Okay, he, she used to be a huge Young Turks fan. And apparently when, like, Jank and them were talking about her, she got so sad and cried because she was, like, a stan. No, she's a Scientologist. No, no. Wait, let me see if I can find it. Let's see. Will Smith literally talked about it in an interview. Let's see if that interview is still around. It's an old ass one, dude. Production of... What? No, this isn't it. What the fuck? Will Smith film exits over Georgia laws? No, I don't care about that. Will Smith says his uh, daughter is... A oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Your kids catch a ton of crap on Twitter and elsewhere. That can't be fun. With this generation of kids growing up, the technical 
Technological battering is almost the norm. They generally avoid this stuff. They're really well adjusted around this business, understanding the nature of having to take a battering. It's a brutal world out there for young people, for everybody. Willow had one moment. The Young Turks are Willow's idol. They have a TV show online. They're like a really powerful group of young writers, hosts, and political commentators. Willow loves the Young Turks, and that was the only moment I saw her cry. It wasn't me. It was Jank. But still, at the time, I thought it was like... I mean, I, I, I made... I made fun of them too, but I don't think she saw me making fun of them. But Shane did a video where he pretended to masturbate to a poster of Will Smith's daughter when she was 11. Oh my God, why would you do that? What the fuck? Oh God! Actually, I think Willow, I, I think Willow Smith still watches. I don't know. I forget. I don't know if she watches my content or not. I can't remember. She might not. That's so disgusting, dude. Willow Smith, sorry they made you cry. Pedo jokes were the thing back then, like Pedo Bear was popular. Oh. Why did TYT make fun of them? Um, TYT TYT made fun of them because I mean they were they had like this interview and it was really, really the interview was like kinda strange you know the indigo kids i think that's what it was they called themselves like the indigo children or something hassle hassle there's a deep dive in the fucking Shane Dawson history. Shane Dawson. I kind of don't want to watch that, to be honest. No, boys, I ran the ad early already. Don't worry about that. The ad's not coming. Let's keep going. It was obvious Shane was looking to make something new, and I guess he decided it was time to get a little bold. Shane decided to go all out and insisted on flying Bobby Burns to L.A. to confront him in person. All right, let's fly a hater out to my house. <laughs> Ah, this is a bad idea. See you soon, Bobby Burns. Getting to know someone as a person face to face is an entirely different experience than just watching glimpses of their lives unfold online. And that's something Shane set out to prove in his first collab. But keep in mind, this was also before he took the plunge into the YouTube docu-series world. So it's fair to assume he didn't exactly know the full scope of what he was about to get himself into. I don't think I thought this through completely. <laughs> because I don't know if he actually Okay Can I just ask you a question? I hope people don't get mad at me Shane Dawson's gay, right? Or bi? Okay <laughs> I'm mad <laughs> Why and he's engaged to a dude. Okay, you should know that, Pogo. Why the fuck would I know that? Um. So, but he, but he wasn't like, he didn't come out until like later, right? Right, let's keep going. He, like really doesn't like me or if he was only doing that video to get views and he was like nah this will be a good video i don't know i've never really interacted or confronted somebody that publicly said they think my videos are terrible like i'm sure a lot of my family thinks it but they've never told me maybe he wanted to help bobby i don't know maybe he wanted to boost his channel or something but to me i think he saw it as can you show the title to give credit to the creator can you show the title and the channel to the creator you're watching to give credit to the creator? No. I hate this content creator. And I'm willing to bet he would be very upset if he found out that I was watching his videos right now. He'd be so mad. You should literally fucking write a Twitter thread about how mad this person should be at him too. Be like, hmm. 
this guy is watching your videos and he's not even fucking, you know, showing the title at all times. I bet if he found out, he would be so upset. Let's keep going. As a golden opportunity, a publicity stunt, and an attempt to turn one of his biggest haters, as he called it, into an ally, a friend. He was going to make amends with his critic, a stunt which would ideally assist both of their reputations in the process. And that's not so much of a bad thing, but it's also worth a second glance in hindsight when you consider how dramatically this move affected Bobby's standing on the platform and the next few years of his life as a whole. Whether or not Shane meant to do this out of the kindness of his own heart was besides the point. This decision undoubtedly shifted the trajectory of Bobby's career on a permanent scale. And honestly, why wouldn't it? I'm filming this because I want to have how I was feeling documented. I definitely feel a lot of stress for sure. I didn't know how I was going to feel stress. Did you talk here? From the start, it didn't seem like anything too out of the ordinary. Shane wanted to address what was said in the initial hate video. And again, I'm using quotations because I wouldn't consider anything Bobby said to be hateful. It was just honest criticism of what he saw from Shane Dawson's repertoire of content. But when you use such a visceral title and promote the idea that this guy is some kind of hater, it's going to appear a little disingenuous when he actually turns out to be really friendly in person. Doing, oh my god. Oh, oh my god. It's a good sign. You smell good. Oh, oh. oh, you do smell good. Thank you. From the second these two met, it was almost as if Bobby hadn't said the things that got him there in the first place. I thought, I thought, you, did. I thought you didn't watch my videos. I don't watch your videos. Dude, I've been I've been watching your videos since probably probably 13, 14. Yeah, yeah, I've been watching your videos for years and years and years. You already love him now? Well no, because he apologized. <laughs> and I'm all good with that. Like a bunch of mean shit for yeah. real. <laughs> no, it, I mean, it wasn't a bunch of mean shit. It was a, it was a critical video, but yeah, man, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Almost as if Bobby was intimidated by Shane, or maybe just the prospect of being introduced as a hater to, you know, 11 million new sets of eyes. For Bobby, the stakes for this single collab were higher than ever. Here he was being called a hater by one of YouTube's biggest stars in front of the menacing mob of Shane's more than dedicated fan base. The exact fan base that had the power then to make or break this guy's career. And on one hand, I'm sure it was exhilarating to have your personality acknowledged at such a monumental level, but by that same token, it also sounds like a terrifying prospect. Bobby's anxiety is almost palpable in their first collab, which really did a lot to set the tone for the upcoming series of unfortunate events to ensue. I'll get incredibly intense from some things that just don't make any sense to be intense about. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing, Bobby? What are you doing? A couple times I've been like, oh fuck, no one's gonna like the video. So many people are gonna come to the channel and they'll fucking hate them. I've been doing this for so many years and I've tried everything. I've just tried fucking everything trying to make it work. So I was like 11, I, I think I've been making videos for YouTube. I'm turning 21 in January and I just hope this is the thing, man. The next few parts of the series were when things got interesting. And by interesting, I mean that, not not good for Bobby. When I look at your Instagram, like all your comments are is just hate from Shane Dawson fans and I'm like how do you feel about that? Like I'm I'm genuinely interested like what do you think? Yeah, on the Instagram, everything I post, mm -hmm. I know over half of the things the comments are going to be Hate from Shane Dawson fans. The audience was slowly starting to turn on this new addition to Shane's channel. They weren't- Boys, I'm not gonna fucking meet any of you, especially if you're fucking haters in the chat. Okay? Don't come to my fucking meetups if you're gonna be a hater. Alright? Go to me, the Ugh. I hate you. Get fucked, liberal. Nope, it's not happening. You fucked it up. Do you want to meet my sister? No. We weren't so sure Bobby was using Shane for clout, which was something the people in Shane's camp seemed to just kind of laugh off. If you had the chance to kill me with no repercussions and you'd get all my subscribers, would you do it? Oh, he'd kill you. How? 
Why, why are you hesitating? N no. Are you gonna kill me? No, no, what? No, hey. My hater tries to kill me is a good title. Did just thumbnail? Oh. Just strangling you? This is too real. <laughs> Even strapping you up to a lie detector and lobbing him some hard hitting questions in one. Bro, most motherfuckers in this chat would kill me. Like, they would. They would. Video. Are you using my boyfriend? <laughs> no. Why are you using him? Wait, what? Hitting questions in one video. Are you using my boyfriend? <laughs> no. Why are you using him? No. For views? I mean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, if people weren't skeptical before, they definitely were now. It makes sense to at least be self-aware of the possibility that Bobby was using Shane. Bro, why is Shane Dawson's mom involved in the fucking content making process? It's very strange. My mom is never involved in the content making process, you fucking asshole. Okay, she sometimes gives me food in the background. Murad is literally debate lording me right now. Fuck you, dude. Where are you going? Yeah, you're involved in the content making process too. The content of being a bitch got him, dude. I fucking owned him. I owned him. He has no comeback. He literally just conceded. He said, you owned me. I'm so sorry. You are the best child in this family. Literally, he said that. And I'm not just making this up because he already left the room and has no way to retaliate. Yeah. I'm the winner of that marketplace of idea conversation. Okay. Bane, but these failed attempts to play it off as a joke didn't help dissuade anyone who may have actually thought that. I mean, let's be honest, the theory itself isn't completely dead in the water. There are numerous instances of Bobby expressing an interest in moving to LA to pursue a career in entertainment, and it is possible he saw Shane as his big break. Maybe he wanted to use him for subscribers, money, a way to make connections in the YouTube world, I don't know. Love in hindsight, stuff. it's important impossible to say for certain what his intentions were. Either way, Shane stands during this time felt he was a hater, receiving undeserved publicity to the point where it felt forced and inauthentic. Oh, and did I mention he went out and bought- I say literally every sentence like a teenager because I literally fuck your mom and she literally creams when she hears I say literally. Now you're banned. Got him a car? What? Wait, what? Wait, what? What? If a hate video is all it takes to get a whole ass Jeep, I think Lily's saying us some paying up to do. It'd be cool to do something that's kind of following my move out here and kind of tracking the whole experience of what it's actually like to be a YouTuber. <gasps> that would be You cool. could do all the things I don't want to do, like go to YouTuber parties, oh my God. take showers, get makeovers. <laughs> oh my God, okay, that's the show. <laughs> it didn't help that many of Shane's fans felt the Jeep and the attention should have gone to another YouTuber, Destry Smith, who was another friend of Shane's at the time. It was an entire mess. The fact of the matter was, some were mad at Shane for giving- Motherfucker's name is Destery? Pepe Le D, dude. The real Pepe Le D. Bobby airtime, and others wanted Bobby to return to commentary on his own- Has Chud nine months We don't want David Dobrik or anyone else, we want Bobby's socialist. content to step up your content now game, bud! Brother channel. Regardless, the fans on either side were torn, one way or the other. After a total of five collabs had passed, you'd think things would have gone back to normal. Bobby could return home and- Another pedo? Okay, dude, I'm done, done. alright? My automatic assumption now is like, if you're a fucking YouTuber, you probably did grooming. Until I find out, surprisingly, that they didn't, okay? If you look kind of weird and you're on fucking YouTube, you probably did grooming. You're probably a pedophile. I will literally be pleasantly surprised if the opposite information comes out. Holy shit, dude. What the fuck? Every single fucking person that you guys have brought up today. It's mind-boggling.
We watched so many fucking videos. Every video is like, oh, pedophile, groomer, pedophile, like groom. That's crazy. What the fuck's going on, dude? But Hossie, you have a YouTube channel? Yeah, well, I don't have sex, so it's fine. It is horrifying. Yes. Focus more on his channel and Shane could go back to jacking off to Willow Smith. But there were already other plans in motion. Bobby was offered the opportunity of a lifetime. His own series on Shane's channel. Much like other creators in the past, Bobby was given the chance to upload every Sunday for Shane Dawson's, at the time, 12 million subscribers. Giving Bobby more publicity than he ever could have imagined. It was during this time that his notoriety on YouTube skyrocketed. Garnering around 600,000 more subscribers on his own channel in the meantime, boosting him to nearly 900k at around the peak of his career. In a matter of a few short, short months, Bobby had gone from producing typical commentary videos to having his own house in LA working with a crew on weekly vlogs alongside Shane Dawson with about three times the amount of subs he had before. If you don't think a change that drastic is gonna f*** with your mental health, you are are dead wrong. On top of this brand new atmosphere Bobby was attempting to grow accustomed to in such little time, Shane's fans were still not too keen on this little decision. And before long, the comment sections were absolutely flooded with negative feedback regarding Bobby's addition to the channel. And although Bobby is nowhere near no! a bad guy, I can at least... <laughs> That has 5 million views, dude. That's crazy. Bro, she's blowing up, by the way. She's, uh... She's on, like, a Netflix show and shit. I'm proud of her. She's great. My sister, who doesn't watch you, knows you from this clip. People know that she's not 16, right? I mean, it doesn't really matter because, like, I ultimately run away from her. So, like, even in that situation, I play the part, even though it's a joke. Not 16 copium? Wait, you guys actually thought she was 16? No, Three dude, months. she was, like, fucking okay. 23 or some shit at the time. What the fuck? Or 24. I clearly pre-watched this video. Bitch, I pre-lived it. <laughs> Have you seen the edited version? In so Hasanabi, a Twitch star is changing how we consume the view, uh, news. God, that's such a horrible fucking... That makes my fucking chin look chinless, dude. I don't know why. It looks terrible. I've never looked that bad in my entire life. Oh my gosh, she's 25 now? Just the worst. I haven't seen that video because it looks kind of cringe. There's literally people... Wait, hold on. Wait. Interview. Oh my god. When you find out she's 16... What the fuck? This video is... 700, why is this like a popular fucking meme, dude? It literally does. It really does, though. Oh, that's terrible. I'm gonna take that Wait, as a compliment. How old are you? 16. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what are people saying? Teens be out here looking like a 30 year old woman. Imagine they're actually 30, they'd be looking 70. She looks like she's completed 16 years twice. Just a fellow gay in the chat lesbian pride. Read comments on this one. Love interview. Oh my God, it literally does. It really does though. Oh, that's terrible. I'm gonna take that as Wait, a compliment. Wait, how old are you? 16, I'm just kidding. Okay, bye. I'm just kidding. Bye. Oh, it, it even features the I'm just kidding part, okay. 
She looks like the type to eat spicy Cheetos at the back of the class. The smile when she says 16 and the desperation with which she said just kidding proves that she's not kidding. Men over the age of 18, take notes. This is how quickly you should be leaving if someone you're interacting with seems underage. Say goodbye and run away. That's it. <laughs> oh my god! Plot twist, he's saying bye to the audience. She's definitely not kidding. Bro, she's literally not 16. What the fuck? People think she's 16. I'm losing my mind, dude. That was scary how fast she said, just kidding. Girl, you're putting yourself at risk. Don't fucking do that. All the people in my reply saying, you mean putting him at risk? I completely agree. I think what I meant was lying about her age can get involved with creeps. Lying about your age to get involved with older men is putting herself at risk. But as you guys said, consequences are on the guy. Love you, Hassy Hassel. Also, a lot of you are saying she's 24. I really don't know who this girl is, Law. I thought it was a random person. Nice, Azan. Covering your tracks. Okay, first of all, people be praising Hassan in the comments, but this should be normal. I mean, yeah, literally, that should be normal. Not surprising people should think she isn't joking. It's a weird thing to joke about, in my opinion. Guys, at the time, we already knew Wait, each other. Oh, oh, that's terrible. Oh, that's terrible. We oh. already had known each other. Like, my fucking kidding you. to me. No one knew that it was going to turn into a fucking massive meme with 5.5 million views on Hasanabi Clips, a verified channel with 103 subscribers. Has mods. Ah! Ah, the Hassan Abi clip complex is so strong, dude. There's like three re-uploads of the Sav clip with all of millions of views. Oh yeah, they're verified. Daily dose of the Hassan Abi got verified. I remember when you wink winked before you end a stream. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, brother. You follow too closely. Follow from a distance. This man was out there expeditiously. He was not playing any games, Law. <laughs> he wasn't walking away. That was the FBI dragging him out of there. No, these aren't my... Uh... These are not my channels. These are fan channels, dude. It's Casually explain first date. Oh. These are, these are uh, channels made by you guys. Let's go in the community. And then you now. come back in here and you fucking... The dudes that make these channels literally now just like... Send me gift subs and shit. For funsies every now and then. They're just like... There was a point where... How was I should verify then? I don't know. The Hasanabi Clips Industrial Complex is real. Oh my god! What the fuck is this, dude? Hasanabi Senpai, Hasanabi Moments, 14.4k, Azan Pago, Hasanabi Edits, Mr. Hasanabi, Hasanabi Memes, Hasanabi Daily, Hasanabi Hot Take, Hasanabi Recap, Hasanabi Planet, Hasanabi 2, Daily Dose of. Wait, where is mine? Where's the actual channel? Motherfucker, you didn't... Whoever made this literally did not put the actual channel that I, I own and operate. Third line. Hansami Senpai. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. I didn't even see it. Bro, I literally could not see my own channel in a sea of fucking channels on that clip con. Asanabi 2 is not yours? Nope. Asanabi Records? Nope, none of these are mine. Hasanabi is my only channel. And then there's Hasanabi Gaming, 
which is like not my own channel. Kidder Steve operates it. And I think Will started, Will, Bar Will Barker got involved in it. And now he's like getting uh, some other editors to work on some gaming uh, vids and shit too. Look at this one. This clip channel's down bad. Dude, I know. I saw this. I literally saw this, dude. Yes. I saw this fucking clip channel. Sometimes I look. It's all interactions that I have with girls. Asanabe shoots the shot at Karina Koff and fails. If that's the fuck, but uh, that speaking of cringe. I'm not even going to look at that, dude. It's going to hurt my feelings. Not me shamelessly, at least subs to three other fakes. No, no, no. It's fine. If you sub to them, that's fine, dude. I don't have a... I do not have a problem with the... Uh, uh, what do you call it? With these fucking channels. As long as they're not like... As long as they're... Dude, I don't, I don't give a fuck about IP, any of that shit. As long as they're not like, one, portraying me in a bad light. Two, uh, linking back to my Twitch and my original YouTube. Three, specifying that they're an unaffiliated channel. I don't have an issue with it. I hope you guys make money. That's why I always joke whenever people say, whenever people fucking say like, dude, what if, what if someone were to steal all of your content and upload them and make money off of that? I'm like, oh no, how bad would that be, dude? That would be so sad. Please don't do that, man. Nor the titles are so weird. They both want Hasanabi. Yeah, this person's like a big coomer. Has Chud. Least down bad Hasanabi viewer. Yeah. I wish I was that couch. Eighty five thousand views. He sent Hasanabi the wildest DM. Hi, Hassan. Good morning, Hasanabi. What the fuck? She couldn't keep her hands off Hasanabi. She caught Hasanabi lying. Wait, what the fuck was this? What happened to me? I, I did something that you guys are not going to uh, like. You guys are going to get mad at, but I went and I got, because it was in short uh, notice, I went and I got one of those you don't uh, charter jets, of which is kind of like a private jet, but it's not really. And I didn't want to talk about it because it's so cheap. It's the same price. Actually, I paid more for a southwest flight Just than i did for this jet you small what's up i'm oh yeah i am yeah so basically what happened is oh what's up Opal? so basically what happened is i got on this i was supposed to get on this thing the reason why i'm saying jet because like i need you to understand that you can be late to this sort of stuff okay um this did come up today no are you lying Hairline was way better back then. What? Motherfucker, I had the same hairline. It's just pushed forward. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I'm, about how unprepared you are? Well, okay, I'm just saying that you can be like oh, later to it than like a regular boarding cried. process. Okay? You can be kind of late. Hey, if you like this video, Oh, please subscribe okay that's definitely not for this channel but whatever not gonna lie you look much better than that then 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 now sorry bruv i mean each their own my friend Don't be fucking rude. I mean, I was in better shape there, but I like the way I look right now. And I think people unironically got used to the fucking bullhorns. You know what I mean? Check Corinna Twitter likes. She's horny for you. I'm not going to do that.
I'd let you do unspeakable things to me. Fuck these chatters. Thank you, fanboy poggies. I can't believe this fucking clip, dude. Wow, we went so many different places. Let's finish this fucking video. Understand where some of the anger came from. Up until this point, Bobby was mostly known for his hard-hitting criticism and biting commentary of his fellow creators. This is why his own fans liked him. And it's ultimately why I enjoyed watching him too. He had a distinct style that he was able to just nail down and it didn't make any sense for him to change things so drastically out of the blue. But that's exactly what he did. We are here at Target and I'm going to be joined by my friend and Thomas and Nathan. Oh, and I guess also Jordan as well. They're going to be spending fifty dollars each. Oh, dude, I, I I'm not gonna fucking leak, but that's the Culver City Target. Been there many times. Um, yeah, this guy changed his fucking content because he wanted to be famous and make a lot of money. That's the difference. Story is fucking wild. What is this? Dude, I can't click on Twitter. Sh oh, it's just a fucking fan cam. Dude, that's not even a fan. It's a gift, dude. Fuck. One hour? Should I give him one hour? Okay. Oh wait, I want that. <sighs> Listen to what Shane Dawson said. Calls a six-year-old girl sexy? No thanks, dude. The story's fucking wild. Why you should watch Read One Piece channel. Okay, you guys need to stop it. Okay, we're finished. You buy me a surprise birthday gift that I don't know what it's gonna be, and they're spending my money on it. Yes. So, <laughs> see how it goes. It was like he was trying to go for this David Dobrik kind of thing. He even said it himself a year later. I was trying to make like a show. Like, I wanted it to be like, like, friends and like what David Dobrik was doing kind of mixed with the feeling of friends and kind of the pace of that. These videos weren't necessarily bad, they just didn't connect with people the same way his old ones did. Because not only can it be a nice sports car, but it can be a forklift. <laughs> Which is what you need. Fuck yes, yes. that is actually what I can <laughs> fuck these things. Do I give him a push in the, in the belly? <laughs> Do your best impersonation of it. <laughs> you're, you're a little flat. Even if he was trying to show a more intimate side of his life, he ended up doing the opposite, with his particular vlogging style stripping away a lot of Bobby's personality, coming across as highly manufactured and forced to a lot of people. I'm very excited to share my life with you guys in a way that I can be proud of. I have been a filmmaker for a very long time and- I mean, this dude got a hot girlfriend, fucking blew Witch. up. Like good for him, you know? Yeah, he stopped making, like, content shitting on uh, people. Wait, please don't say... Don't, Pepe, is, is the girlfriend not, like... Is the girlfriend underage or something? Please stop. Oh, God. It is part of my DNA. I shoot like a filmmaker, or at least that's what I like to tell myself. And I want to make films about the things happening around me. It's the things that I know. It's the things that I am good at telling stories about. At least, I think I am. It was almost too polished. You want vlogs to be presented nicely, but you also need some element of rawness in order to keep it real. The whole reason people watch vlogs is to get an edited yet authentic sense of your life. And ideally you relate to it. And I guess people just weren't getting that from Bobby. Vloggers draw their viewers in through a brief yet seemingly real window into their life, which doesn't work when that window appears deceiving. I mean, it would, uh, the best collab videos are when you're working with someone that you really care about, or at least someone you have something in common with that you can make a video about that thing. You can fake it for views. 
Yeah, but people can tell that. Whatever it was Bobby was attempting to do, ultimately it fell flat on its face, and Shane was quick to take notice. Hey guys, um, I wanted to talk about um, the Bobby Burns situation a little bit, because I haven't really said anything. I think it is affecting him. I mean, I know it's affecting him. I've talked to him about it. Um, and I've been a little out of the loop, so when I saw all of the, the comments and stuff, I was like, okay, like, I should say something. After it was established that the series was on a, uh, let's say, extended hiatus, Shane was quick to clear the air of any potential rumors, and that although things hadn't gone down the way either of them had intended, he had still hoped to work with Bobby again in the future. Uh, he didn't. And as far as working with Bobby in the future, I mean, yes, of course. I don't know about the Sunday show. I'm gonna be honest. Me and him still have to sit down and figure it out. But I know for a fact that I'm still gonna do stuff with him. Whether that's on his channel, my channel, I don't know. But like, that whole Sunday thing, if it happens again, needs a whole reinvention just because it just was like way too hard to make, way too, like it just, all of it. Feeling. Um, it's a lot. All right. I. I'm gonna go shower. Just kidding, never fight. In fact, they never really interacted much publicly after this. It was just a very surreal ending to an even more surreal venture. Bobby was thrown to the wolves before losing his newly found audience at an unprecedented rate and subsequently- Wait, did they unsubscribe from him? Dude. <laughs> Dude, get out of here, guys. Get out of here. Go back. Go back to wherever fucking corner of the internet you guys are in, okay? the subject of numerous critiques himself. It didn't even feel like it happened, really. It was all so fast and never gave Bobby a chance to get situated. Did it affect your outside life at all, or? Just like the whole, the backlash, I guess. Oh, like... destroyed my entire life. Completely. Yeah, yeah. Like I, it, it got to the point where I, I didn't leave my house ever. I stayed in bed most days. I, I think I did like it, it like, crumpled everything around me, and it, it got. It got really bad. <laughs> For the next few months, Bobby continued posting to his channel as regularly as possible. We just got our carpet in. Um, let's let's open it up. I have a crotch hole. My asshole. No, you look pallid. Pallid? And you... ghostly. Because I am. Oh, okay. I feel like a weird sprouse. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. I had a crush on, on one Disgusting one. scraggle hairs right here. Bobby 5.0 consisted of 12 to 16 minute documentaries, as he described them, centered around his own experiences living in LA with Shane. But once the Sunday show was axed, this particular era of Bobby's channel took even more of a nosedive taking a massive toll on his online and offline life. Why do you think? Like, just because you, you changed your content? I, it, there's, I think there is a, a, a lot of different things. That, that, that there's a lack of communication, definitely. Yeah. I communicated to my audience the exact same way I had always communicated to my audience. I didn't tell them what was going on in my videos. I didn't give them much behind the scenes. I didn't tell them almost anything ever. So when this huge audience came in, I continued to not do that because I was like, I don't have to do I think people don't realize that like, these people are content creators, man. Like, I don't know. I mean, this is like 24 minutes so far, but like, and maybe there's gonna be a plot twist in the end, but like, I'm watching this and it just feels like this dude wanted to entertain people and make money and like be a YouTuber, right? And people just like thought that he was, I don't know, authentically shitting on other YouTubers because he cared about like decency or something. I don't know what the fuck. So are you guys throwing? Stop! Stop throwing up at Payless, dude. Jesus Christ, dude. Stop. Ah. You keep doing this, dude. Do that, I can just make the videos. 
but you can't whenever there's that many people because if you they don't see you they think you're dead but i don't think that was it at least not all of it the problem had to do with bobby's rampant inconsistency which polarized both old and new viewers alike bobby was trying to make content centered around his personality without giving his viewers enough of his personality to latch onto. from what we did see at the time it seemed like he had an ego mixed with an awkward funny boy persona even if it wasn't it still felt disingenuous Genuous. Without becoming attached to him, it was easy for people to grow tired of this shtick and question his rampant character changes. Nothing stays stagnant on his channel long enough for this new audience to become invested or even understand what was going on. Because once 5.0 was literally beaten into the ground, a new persona rose from the ashes. Well, now he has the only nobody, fans, right? I mean, nobody could have seen coming. What? Okay, never mind, dude. That is way stranger just than just doing OnlyFans. Just do OnlyFans. That's like I would not have thought. That's weird, dude. What the fuck? Fucking came out of nowhere, dude. Never clean. I keep that pocket so machine. Red diet, kiss you be fat. Love the team. Grills hot. Feel the steam. I'm gonna beat this. Not about him. Right as the car was heading towards the cliff, Bobby hit the f***ing accelerator. Rolling out not only an entire album he had apparently been working on since 2017, but a brand new character as well, dubbed Nasty appropriately. It wasn't even that his music was bad, it was just so completely out of line for what people were already kind of expecting. I mean, I get you- That's what I mean, like, obviously I have no problem with OnlyFans. Shouts out to everybody on OnlyFans. But, uh, it's just like, it came out of left field. Very subvert weird. Subvert expectations, but come on. You hate me, hate me. Fuck me, fuck you, fuck me. I'm sure this could have gone over somewhat better had he been a little more tactful about it. But instead, he just threw all caution to the wind and hoped for the best. Didn't exactly work out that way, though. The whole idea for the Nasty Tape and Nasty in general, a bisexual person in the Deep South was abused and treated horribly for his sexuality. Wait, I'm so confused. Like, is he doing this while also simultaneously... Is he doing this? while also simultaneously fucking like doing the rap videos. So it's like a persona, like is, someone immediately said shifting. Stop it. I'm saying he's shifting, dude. He's by rapping. And became this ultra masculine, nasty, aggressive, basically a version of everything I hate. But then at his core, he's still secretly bisexual. If you want to use sexuality to create a compelling narrative that addresses homophobia and suppression, then that's great. That's not what this is. If you want to shield your bad music from criticism by slapping on a half assed narrative about sexuality, then that's not so great. Bobby Burns, fight point no. Why you so depressed? Lots of chips plus a Jeep. Wow, a lot of fucking stress. Bullet in your chest, mango. You see in your life with a knife. Well, your ass is check. That's right. Yeah, guys, uh, <laughs> I honestly don't know what to say. I think the man is literally going through a manic episode, just like Fuzzy Tube. Everybody's saying that Fuzzy Tube is crazy. Maybe Bobby Burns is actually the one we should be looking out for. But I honestly do believe that ever since Bobby's actually met Shin, his content is completely diminished. And not because Shin. of Shin, but because of the apparent. My I mean, say Shin. Dude, this is like. To be fair, I think uh, I don't know. I, I feel like that's what was popping. This dude is just like. This dude just like went through every fucking phase. Like when people were doing the rap phase, he got into the rap phase. Uh, when people were doing, I guess the Shane Dawson phase, he was doing the Shane Dawson phase. And now everyone's doing OnlyFans. He's doing OnlyFans. He's just like hopping on trends from one trend to the other. But the difference is like a lot of YouTubers build their brand around their personality like Jake Paul, right? And Jake Paul is just Jake Paul the entire fucking time. He's just Jake Paul doing the rapping. And now it's Jake Paul selling crypto. Do you see what I'm saying? Whereas this guy, 
the problem is like he got too invested in every fucking thing that he was doing and didn't like didn't bring a piece of himself to whatever the fuck he was doing Feel me? Fakeness that is spewing out of Bobby Burns' fame hungry body. Get your shit together. Get your shit together. Get it all together. At the end of the day, I think Bobby's real fans only want him to be Shin. happy making whatever content satisfies him the most. A lot of the criticism thrown his way since the Shane collabs have been based on the subjective opinions viewers seem to have of Bobby's character, and assumptions that may or may not have been grounded in reality. But Shane Dawson's core fan base also sees this sort of fake aura around Bobby, the fact that he switched up so crazily from hating Shane to being his best friend or some shit and working for him. And Bobby used to make videos on Shane's channel and they were getting a shit ton of dislikes. Most of the comments were like, fuck this guy, stop uploading videos of him, please. We don't know the real Bobby. We only know what he chooses to display online. Which also means Bobby can't get so defensive when people rightfully complain about him making such a sudden and jarring change. So when are you going to be back to making sick YouTube videos again? You know the th only thing you're really good at. Which sick ones? The, the like Lego Angry Birds? <laughs> or what does Suicide Squad mean about mean the future of film? Uh, yeah, I'll go back to doing that. People change. People's interests naturally grow and evolve with them. Bobby should be able to make whatever will fulfill him creatively because nobody ever wants to be placed in some kind of box. It's a completely valid request and I get it. Though I can't help but think it was this type of disconnect with the fans that helped get him in this position to begin with. As his content matured, I'm gonna be honest with you, like, this dude, this is only relevant if you like this dude and you liked this dude when he was making videos and then you were pissed off that he's no longer making those kind of videos. Ultimately, it doesn't feel like, like, there wasn't a oomph. There wasn't, like, uh, you know, any sort of, like, laws being broken, you know what I mean? I was expecting, like, someone who's just doing, like, incredibly manipulative and incredibly shitty things and it turns out it's just like he's just some guy and he's just a youtuber and people i wrote an album loosely based on the experience I talked about here in this video it's called fame is fentanyl check out the full album lyric video on my channel love you okay i mean he's just like a demon he's like a clout demon that's it Bobby wanted people to follow him along his creative journey, but they can't exactly do that without first getting to know who you are and who your personality is, which is a front in which Bobby failed. And I don't even know if it was completely his fault either. Are you scared? Are you are you ever scared of like okay? I'm terrified of how quickly everything happened, how unprepared I was. That's that's the main reason I think so so much of the stuff out there is just because I was 20. Yeah. I got a. a, a you skip lovely peaches for a reason. Yeah, this was good. People who are saying this video sucked need to remember that, like, we almost watched perhaps the worst video on YouTube. Okay? We skipped this. We, we skipped that one, so we watched this instead. And I think this was a good video to watch instead. So we'll fucking go back to the... You know what? Fuck you. We're going to watch Lovely Peaches after this. How about that? Okay. Yeah, you fucked up, dude. Decent chunk of money and the ability to help a lot of people. But I was 20 and I didn't know what I was doing and I tried yeah. to do it and I just fell right. apart uh, in my hands because I was like, I don't know how to handle financials well. We're naturally inclined to believe that such monumental fame is an inherently good thing. But when it happens so spontaneously at an extreme level, it can often have the opposite effect on a person's overall psyche. In hindsight, joining forces with Shane Dawson turned out to be the most damaging choice Bobby could have ever made. And although no one at the time could have predicted the tumultuous series of months to come, Shane didn't exactly make Bobby's life any easier. Shane never really defended Bobby from the unprecedented onslaught of unjust hate coming from his fan base. Neglecting his apparent needs and taking the easy way out by cutting ties with him publicly to save face. When Shane's fans attacked Bobby for getting into a car crash, I couldn't find anything from Shane trying to stop it. He deleted videos and changed titles so he obviously knew there was a problem, but I don't think he did enough to stop it. From a business perspective, it makes sense. You want to keep your audience happy. What? Have you heard of the YouTube Russian streamer that 
that killed his girlfriend on stream? What? What the fuck are you talking about, dude? What are you... Bro, this literally has a, a fucking... Like, inappropriate and offensive by some... This is just live leak, dude. Hey, man. Yo. Yo, dude. At Hasanabi. You gotta watch this live leak video, dude. It's a real beheading. Basically, that's what you're doing. But Bobby was essentially left without a figure to guide him along this new path of fame. It ended up caving under all the weight he had been burdened with, losing his house and girlfriend in the coming months due to finances. The career altering publicity combined with a lack of public support after the fact inadvertently helped fan the flames of the devastating collapse that soon followed. To put it simply, Bobby had little to no experience navigating through the unprecedented amount of attention so suddenly thrown his way. And with Shane doing little to protect Bobby from the menacing heat of his own fans, Bobby was hung out to dry as we all witnessed the slow yet persistent downfall of a bright young creator who hadn't exactly figured it all out, crushed by the intimidating nature of such sudden and immense success, diminishing his potential and making Bobby Burns the victim of another manipulative YouTuber's forced generosity. Once again, I want to thank Storyfire for sponsoring. He locked his girlfriend out in the middle of the night and she died of hypothermia. What a fucking scumbag. I hope he... He kept on streaming after the cops got there. People donated him to lock her out on the balcony in the cold. After she died, he propped her up on camera for more donos. What? She was pregnant as well? It was on Twitch. Her body was on stream for hours. The cop asked him to shut it down. So what happens like that guy went to jail, right?